All right, let's stay and worship our God. We just uh, uh, thank you for just that picture of what you've done for us, uh, your love for us, and um, your beauty is all around us. We just uh, thank you that we can um, look anywhere and see that your hand is on on us, and uh, just thank you for loving us. Just bless our worship time in Jesus' name. Amen. be seated. Sorry. <laughs> sure. Lois Arnold moving, moved yesterday. Uh, Boy Lawson, still fighting a good fight. Jim Weberg, lots of doctor's appointments this week. Prayer for Margaret Ely family as her sister Laura Henry passed away. Uh, and John Davis, still having trouble with his breathing. Um, I'll probably get out there tomorrow. I've talked to him over the weekend. Uh, he had two oxygen machines running side by side to keep him going. 
Uh, that's pretty unusual. So, John Davis. All right. That's that's the ones that I'm uh, aware of. I know there's people traveling and all that. But uh, any anyone else? Anything else? Yes. Okay. Okay. I uh, did have an update. I forgot. Uh, West Cunningham, home with home health, trying to get stronger so they can knock him down again, right? He's got another surgery coming. So they're trying to get his strength back up uh, so they can finish the, the work. Anything else? Okay. All right. Goes without saying, but I'll say it anyway. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Uh, we're watching, in case you're not paying attention, we're watching prophecy right in front of our eyes. On Sunday nights, we've been talking about this, what they call the inner ring. It's the nations right around us they're dealing with right now. And sooner or later, they're going to have to deal with those outside. So be in prayer. My hope and my prayer, I don't want to get ahead of my message here, but that we begin to say, hey, there needs to be an urgency in our hearts and spirit in seeking God and sharing our faith. That's my hope. All right. All right. We're, you know how this works. I'm going to just give you a moment to pray. Um, and then I'll break in the middle of your prayer here in just a minute, give you a chance to you share your heart with God. And I promise you I will not remember all the names when I pray, but I'll do my best. Okay. So, all right. Well, let's go before the Lord in prayer together as a church. Father, as I think of Israel and being surrounded and attacked from all sides, I look at the prayer list for those not here. We're surrounded and we're being attacked from all sides. And Lord, we need you to rise us up to be more than conquerors. To remember your scriptures, and we only quote them, it seems like when we're in need, but they're always true. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. We are more than conquerors through Christ. And so, Father, I thank you that we'll be the overcomers we are to be. Our focus is our Father. Our Savior is his Son. And we're empowered by his Spirit. The three in one. And so I thank you. We pray in the spirit, we teach, we listen in the spirit to what you are doing in our lives and those around us. Father, we, we see the physical. We see the healings that are needed, the physical. But sometimes, Father, we're not seeing the lostness. We're not seeing the loneliness. We're not seeing the pain. We're not seeing the confusion or the doubt we're not seeing the anger, the emotions. Father, may we see things the way you see them. Thank you, Father. You are our strength. Oh, Lord, we quote this one verse so much. And I, I just, oh, I hate things when they just become, oh, that's a nice little cliche. It's not. It's the word of the living God. I can do all things through Christ, through Christ. So this day we want to pray 
through Christ. I can do all things. The all things, and Paul writes that is I can be poor, I can be broken, or I can prosper. All things. No matter what comes, we live life through Christ. Father, for the healing so needed and the peace that comes with it, for Rosemary and Dawn, for Kelly and Leanne, the peace that Lois Arnold needs in the move, the strength and the courage that Boy and Jim need, the comfort for Margaret and her family, the passing of her sister Laura, the hope that John and Linda Davis need we come, comes from you. For Wes Cunningham, don't give up, Wes. Don't give up. This neighbor of Charles Shane, let it be known that his name was before the throne room of God today. Father, for our nation, we're watching. I, I, I cannot believe the demonic forces that have taken over our country. Those that would hate Israel, death to Israel. And the media thinks that's okay. And that's how far we've fallen. We have fallen in every area. In the way we were created, male and female, we've, we've confused that. We've given up on a nation that you said was yours, and that's Israel. Jerusalem, the apple of your eye. Your word, we've disregarded it. We're paying no attention to the prophets, to your word, to the life of Christ, his death and resurrection, and the hope we have. Father, as a nation, we have, we have just, we're worse than Jonah. Jonah ran to get away from his calling. We think we can run and live our own lives without God. I would pray we would return. We start with the church, with the people that you have saved and called by name. Resurrection power in us. A change of heart and mind. Love it strengthens one another. We truly want what's best for each other. We thank you. Your church will prevail. Jesus said it. We believe it. Jesus said, I'll come again. We believe him. May we be ever watchful for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. We give you thanks. You are so faithful to your people. And as your word says, great is thy faithfulness. Your mercies are new every morning. Oh, thank you, Lord, this morning. You gave us strength. In the name of Jesus, we pray. We seek your face. We hunger and thirst for your righteousness. And we do that in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right, let's stand as we sing just a closer walk with thee. I think.
hearts are there, Lord. We thank you, Father, for, for this day that you've given. We will rejoice and we'll be glad in it. We thank you so much for your provision and, uh, and your providence in our lives, Lord. Um, we may have times of prosperity. We may have times of distress and destruction, Lord. But we thank you that you're our hope and you're our stay. Uh, through no matter what is ahead. But Lord, we pray that ultimately your will be done in this world, in America, and in our church. Your will be done, and we'll be glad in that as well, Lord. We thank you. Lord, we ask that you bless our offering today. Uh, please bless uh, the ministries it goes to, our own pastor. Please bless him and his family. Uh, provide and, and be with them, Lord. Please keep, keep evil away from their home. We ask that you just bring peace and love to that, that home and their family. We thank you so much for them. Thank you for the other ministries, Lord, uh, Samaritan's Purse, and uh, missionaries who are facing some very tough roads and tough battles wherever they're at. Uh, Lord, please just uh, grow, th grow your kingdom through what we can give. We thank you so much for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Today is, I don't usually do this, but I'm going to back into last week's and go just a tiny bit farther today, because when we get to the next section, it's going to take some time. And I thought, today's not the day to preach for an hour and a half, all right? We're all grateful, and everybody said, amen, so glad. But we're in Acts chapter 2. There's a gathering. There's a gathering of saints. It's a it's a festival. It's Pentecost. God loves a crowd. And we talked about how he gathers people in. Of course, the big one is we always think about is uh, Bethlehem. Why were all those people there? You know, it's because they were all called there uh, to bring their register for their taxes and all that. But God used that time with everybody in town 
to bring Christ into the world. And my, my thought was about, there, there's, there's, I'll call them mountaintops or peaks or whatever in Scripture. And one of the first ones is in the beginning, right? That's a pretty high point. He spoke the worlds into existence. And then we got Noah and the flood. That's a pretty big deal. Abraham, you know, get through the prophets and the gospels are some pretty high points. Well, you know what? This is a high point. This is when God said, fulfilled his promise through Christ to empower his church. Now, here's what happened last week. Here's what happened, all right? So I, I preached that message, and I went home, and I went, wow, that was kind of an intellectual thing. We talked about Peter bringing history and poetry and prophecy, and I thought, that's pretty powerful stuff that he did. He preached a message, and you can count them yourself, but it's something like 589 words, okay? How long did it take him to preach it? I don't know. Because if he's like me, he might have chased a few rabbits along the way, you know? He might have gone, oh, by the way, I was at the groceries. I was on an elevator on vacation. You know that story? I promised I'd never tell again. Okay. But, but you know, all these things started working in. But it's, it's the timing. It was the people there. You know, the other thing I never saw, I didn't think about this before, okay? If God set the time then he set the people. He had prepared the hearts of people to receive. Because if he doesn't, nothing happens. If God, and here they come gathering for this feast, for this Pentecost, and not one of them, I, except for Peter and the, and the 11, were even there probably thinking about Jesus. They were fulfilling their, their obligation. They were coming to town at the feast time. And so they're there doing that. You ever do that? You get together for a big dinner and you forget why. Oh, it was your birthday. I forgot. Hope you enjoyed the meal. All right? But, but so all this, but somehow in the midst of people looking out in other directions, thinking of other things, isn't that like the world? We're just kind of going through life and we're not thinking about our eternity. We're not thinking about Jesus, but God's thinking about you. You know, in that song, we just sang a song a minute ago uh, in the hymn, I think it's the hymn of heaven, and I'll mess up the line. I don't remember it. But it's about we'll be worshiping with the saints, standing side by side. And so I thought about this, and I thought, won't that be amazing? Man, I started getting glory bumps. Can you imagine? But I've got something bigger for you, but hang on, hang on. Okay, so you're there, and you're lifting your hands, or you're praying, or whatever, and you bump shoulders and go, that's Moses. I'm standing next to Moses. And you go over here and you go, Bam. I'm standing next to Noah. I can't believe this. I'm in heaven. And you know what? Here's the big part. They're going to look at you and go, I'm standing next to Carl. I'm standing next to Bill. I'm standing next to Rich. I'm standing next to John. This is amazing. As you will know them, they will know you. Isn't that a good thing? Wow, that's free. That just occurred to me while we were singing that song. I hope we're all listening to the Lord when we're, we're singing and we're praising him and, and, and be just thinking about him, all right? So, oh, anyway, so it's the day of Pentecost. Okay, so here, here's my thing. Here's my thing. So I, I preached this last week. Am I excited? You better believe it. Uh, preached this last week, and I went home, and I went, and so I watch it. We tape it. Chapman puts it out there. In case you don't know, we have a YouTube you can just go out there, Body Lynn Baptist. You can watch all the sermons. Uh, if you don't come here and you don't listen to the sermons, uh, I will come to your house for $10,000, okay, and re-preach the whole thing, all right, if you would like to do that. I have, so far, I've not had any takers. But, but anyway, it's out there. So I watch it for me because I look at it and I go, well, that was a stupid thing to say. I can't believe you said that. I can't believe you missed that point. I can't believe you about fell off the stage or whatever it is. You know, I critique myself, which is a very dangerous thing. But sometimes I just listen and I go, that was pretty good. At, and this is the way I looked at it. That was good information. But, but to me, there's a place where there's got to be a passion. Peter had a passion. When he preached that, he pleaded with them. We talked about it last week. He warned them 
and he pleaded with them, and he said, save yourselves. Save yourselves. It's like, jump out of the building into the net. Jump into the sea, into the lifeboat. Save yourselves. Don't you see what's coming? And oh, what a day we live now. Urgency's got to be there. Okay, so I started back here about three times. So I thought about this. This thing's heavy. Okay, but anyway, I got it right. Yeah, I got it going the right way. Uh, so I thought about fireworks. I really wanted to do fireworks. And, and I was looking for fireworks, and then I decided bottle rockets in here is probably not a good idea because I'm clever like that. I don't know if this is going to work. See if I can do this. Okay. Okay. So I'm thinking, here's the thing. Peter stands up. I don't, we know there's at least 3,000 there because that's how many get saved. But what if there was three times that much? We don't know. Okay. But when Peter gets up, okay, they start paying attention. They start listening. Can you think of this? Think of it this way. Since I know where some of our minds are right now, hope they're on the Lord. But there's a game going on, okay? I heard about it, okay? There's thousands of people there yelling, screaming, screaming at each other. I've seen fights in the stands recently. Have you seen those? <laughs> the whole world's gone nuts. Uh, and then a man stands up on the 50-yard line and goes, <clears throat> what you see here today, and they'll get quiet and they listen. Do you think that will happen? Uh-uh. No, no. It would be great if they would, but they, they won't. They won't. That's not where they're, they're at. So he, he did, gives this sermon, a little under 600 words, 569. You can count it and go home today and just you're sitting around going, I think I'd like to count to 569. You just go help yourself. Uh, but anyway, he's, today's message is called Take a Stand. With a crowd pressuring, not thinking about Christ, he decides to take a stand. That's pretty bold. And we've talked about this before with Peter. Peter was the one that denied Christ three times. But here, all of a sudden, because of the coming of the Holy Spirit, the empowering, he just goes, I got something to say, and if I don't say it, I'm just going to blow up, you know? I mean, I, I got to say it. I got to do this. And so we would have to read the whole chapter over again, and I, I won't do that. But it, it talks about the Holy Spirit coming, all right? When they heard this sound, a crowd came together. Okay, they heard a sound, and the crowd came. What was that? An explosion? Somebody shooting fireworks? Why are they screaming? What is that noise? Was there a tornado? And so they gather together, and they start coming, and then they hear the language. Utterly amazed. I'm just picking this out of the middle, so you'll never find it by the time you get there. First five. Utterly amazed, they ask, aren't all those who are speaking Galileans? What? Don't all those people that are talking there from Kansas, and we understand them here in Missouri? What is this? How can I understand that? There's, I've heard rumors there's people out there from Oklahoma and Arkansas for crying out loud. But we all hear the same language. What are they hearing? Now, now you, you, all you scholars could argue this all day, okay? Was it some kind of static heavenly language that they just understood it? Or was it everybody heard their own language? You know, at the UN, they got those headphones on, and they can hear, no matter what the speaker says, they get it in their own language, all right? Which is probably more like what happened. But here that we're hearing this, all these people, and then it lists them all out there. I'm not going to read all those names again from Cappadocia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, all those. Libya, Cyrene, and then it just says, visitors from Rome. Man, these people are from everywhere, and they came. This is bigger than a Billy Graham crusade. This is amazing. And what is just as amazing, at least to me, then in that moment, Peter had 
the boldness to stand. What if they turn on him? It happens later. We'll get to that in Acts chapter 7. They turn on Stephen. What if they do that? What if they rush the stage? And it's like Peter, he had no thought of anything else other than proclaiming Christ. He didn't, he didn't worry about the response. He didn't worry about the outcome. He, he fulfilled his role in that moment. And so we, we, we continue. I'm going to jump through here. Last week we talked about he quoted some psalms, which he does, and he quotes from Joel chapter 2. Psalm 110, farther down in there, about verse 34, 35. Let's get to where we are today. So we're, we're there. I think in your notes, I tried to just briefly put in the, a little bit of last week, the explanation. He did the history, he did the poetry, he did the prophecy. Of course, he preached Jesus in those five places right there specifically. Then he gave his testimony we're always good. Give your testimony. All right. We are all witnesses of it. There was an experience. Okay. The top of the page there where it's blank. <laughs> I'm only laughing at myself because this is going to be like a 12-minute message and it ain't going to happen. But, but right here at the top, because this, this is the order of salvation, all right? Number one in the blank, sinners. Peter says this to him, God's deliberate plan and foreknowledge, and you, with the help of wicked men, put him to death by nailing him to the cross. And then later down in the passage, he said, let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. Twice he mentions, this is your doing. You did it. But okay, for all you theologians and scholars, here we go. Here we go. This is going to mess up my theology and yours. Okay, you ready? I'm going to go back and read this again. God's deliberate plan and foreknowledge with the help of wicked men. It was God's plan all along. God knew it was going to happen, but yet men participated. So what do we say? What, what's our argument? We have it later with Paul. All right. Well, if I, I just fulfilled God's plan, I, I can't be held accountable for that. Oh, yes, you are. It, it's one of those moments that, that God says, here's this rail, and this is my plan. This is a train track, and this is you. You're the other rail. They don't meet, and the thing is, God knows what I'm going to do, but that does not negate the fact that I'm going to be responsible for what I do when I meet him. Does that make sense? His foreknowledge. He knew this was going to happen. And he knew what these people were going to do. And both of those things happen, both under God's plan. And he knows. He knows when I'm going to fail. And so we, we get confused in our theology. Well, well, can it be both? Can God be sovereign and in charge of everything and I still do stupid stuff? Yes. And as soon as you figure that out, write a book. Okay? Go ahead. Just help yourself. I got that from Spurgeon himself, so there you go. All right. So there's sinners. He says, you guys did this. You did this wickedness. Now, I got, here's a quote. This is from John Phillips, who writes commentaries, old-time pastor. Calvary, which is the killing of Christ, the cross, was a crime of such magnitude that God could have justly ushered in the apocalypse at once and wiped out the human race. Couldn't he have done it then? You killed my son. You crucified my son. It's over, guys. Everybody out. Think, think of Noah when, when the flood came for Noah. You know, and they said, oh, people just thought of evil all the time. And God goes, that's enough. Everybody out. Okay. Well, he could have done that here. He could have said, man, you all are just horrid people. I sent you my son to save you. He brought healings. He fed you. He did miracles. The blind see, the lame walk, the deaf hear, the dead are raised. And this is what you did to my son. But what it did after the resurrection, 
ushered in a whole new age, and we call it the church age. It was God's plan all along to come in that moment. So we're sinners. The next one is one we've already dealt with, and that's Scripture. Always use Scripture. When you begin to think about sharing my faith, go back to Scripture. Do the best you can. We don't have to be scholars. None of us are scholars. None of us are that. But, but always go back to Scripture. Use the Word of God. Learn the Roman road. Whatever. Whatever. Whatever fits that moment. Let the Holy Spirit lead us. The next line is real simple. Supernatural. This is a supernatural work of God. I can't do it. Sometimes when we think my job is to share and to talk you into something. No, that doesn't work. You're not buying a car. You know? Well, let's make a deal. Okay? I'm going to talk you into buying this car. Tell you what I'm going to do. You give me your car and $12,000 and you can have it. You know? It's not let's make a deal. This is uh, saying he... This is the way, this is a supernatural work of God. I'm going to give you the information and I'll let the Holy Spirit write it on your heart and speak directly to you. He might use you. I hope he does. I hope he uses all of us. Where, but where we can share God's plan of salvation. Why did he do it? Why did he go to the cross for us? Why, why did he sacrifice so much? Because he loves us. Because he wants to see you with him for all eternity. And I can start today. And so it's a supernatural work of God, though. I, I always say this. If I can talk you into it, somebody else can talk you out of it, right? All right. So it, it can't just be, it is a mind thing. It is an information thing. But above all else, it's a supernatural work of the Holy Spirit. That's, that's what we pray. So we they were sinners. We use scripture. It's a supernatural work, which we know. Uh, I came up with the word, because uh, i got to start with that, separation. You've got to get separated from the old person, the old man. Somebody posted this week uh, something about the devil wants you to live in the past, but I don't live there anymore. It's something along those lines. I think it might have been Lisa, but I don't remember. Somebody posted something like that. I don't live there anymore. That's not where I live. I don't live in that, that shack. I moved to a, a new one. So I've separated myself from my past. There came a moment in my life and in yours, I hope, that said, what should I do? I am so convicted by the Spirit of God and I am feel so broken that I don't know what to do. I'm scared. I'm shaking. Maybe crying. There's just this, you know, maybe it's not that emotional for some, but there's just this moment where I go, I made a mess of things. God save me. I don't know what that's going to look like. And so Peter, the next one is salvation. Peter replied, repent and be baptized. We've talked about this last week. Every one of you. He didn't leave anybody out. Every one of you. You're hearing this in your language so that you can understand it. I mentioned this last week. God speaks to you and me differently because he speaks how you can understand it. Some of you are a whole lot smarter than I am. So he has to use very small words, right? Come here, Clay. Turn. Okay. But he talks to us differently in different situations. You're in a different place of need. You're in a different pit. You're in a different jail. And God comes and, and speaks. I, I don't know. You ever hear somebody's testimony and they never just like match up? You know, your testimony and my testimony. This is where I was saved. This is where you were saved. This is what's going on in my life. This is when he rescued me. But, but Peter brings it down to the very fundamental things that we do, no matter where you've been. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you 
will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. You got it? Okay. Then he comes. That's when he comes. Lord, I'm a sinner. I need to be saved. Can you wash and can you cleanse me from my sin? Can you give me hope? I feel such a darkness over me, God. Can you bring light? Salvation. You want forgiveness? You want grace? Ask. Wow. I feel a whole lot better. Forgiveness. The last one, and then I got, when I say the last one, it's, we're halfway. Uh, I went out, I put, I put there in bold print, added to bring assurance, okay? This is not in his message. I went to Ephesians and got this. Sealed. Sealed. S-E-A-L-E-D. Not sealed like, oh, oh, oh. Okay. Sealed, like glued together. Ephesians 1.13. When you believed, you were marked in him. Everybody today is talking about what? The mark of the beast. Well, how about the mark of the Holy Spirit first? How come we don't? Let's dwell on that. Because if I have the mark of the Holy Spirit, I don't have to worry about anything else. I'm only going to get marked once. Holy Spirit. He's moved in. Maybe we should all, no, we won't do that. <laughs> we all should get tattooed. No, let's don't do that. But when you believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit. The same one they experienced that day is the same one that comes into my life and yours. Who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of his glory. He's there forever. Oh, wow. You're marked. How, how, uh, we quote this all the time, Matthew 7, I believe it is. And, and people get to heaven, Lord, we did this, Lord, we did that. And Jesus goes, I never knew you. How does he know that so quick? Did, they're not marked, are they? There's no mark. There's no Holy Spirit. There's no presence of himself in me. He knows himself. You look in the mirror, that's me, yep. When he looks at you, he should see himself. And if he doesn't, he knows you're not his. You're sealed, though. I want to bring you comfort. If, 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 if the enemy's coming in and going, well, you failed twice last week, you know, whatever. No, you're sealed. It's not an excuse to sin, but it does give me understand that there's grace when I do. Run back to the Father. All right, five quick things to do when you're sharing your testimony. And, and Peter did them all, so this will be a, a easy, easy peasy. Always point to Jesus. Okay? Always point to Jesus. Who am I making disciples of, me or Jesus? Jesus. I'm not making disciples of me. Would that be a mess? It would be. Point to Jesus. He is your Savior. I am giving you information about him. I'm telling you about him. I'm telling you, okay, let's, let's do it in the natural here. I'm telling you, this restaurant over here is the best I've ever ate at. If you knew that, you would, you would share that, right? I can give you information. I cannot make you go there. All right? So point them to Jesus. Point them to Jesus. He is the Savior, the Lord. That's why in, in Acts 2, Peter does those five things, the life and ministry, the crucifixion, the resurrection. He's seated at the right hand of God. He is Lord and Savior. The one you killed is the Messiah. He made sure they knew who he was. I got to think in that day, they, maybe they, some of them, most of them had heard of Jesus, but maybe not all. We don't know because they came from all areas of the nations. Second, always return to what? Scripture. My testimony and your testimony, and we've shared this before, but, but it's good. You can relate. 
you can say, hey, I was in that place before. I get it. But let me tell you the best way out. Or, uh, you know, this is where I was. That, that's good. But if you just leave it with that, they'll say, well, that's good for you, but not for me. No, no, no. It's based on what Christ said he would do for you. Always return to Scripture. Always stand confidently in faith. Stand in faith. I, I wonder sometimes if our confidence level is down for some reason because I'm putting confidence in myself and not faith in Christ. So I, I think about my own strength and my own weaknesses, and then they come out when I'm trying to share, I can't talk. Have some faith in your Savior. I don't have it in there, but it'd be a good idea to shoot up a prayer, you know? Come on, pray. Always allow for a response. He, <laughs> we always wonder, should we give an invitation? They did. They did. He preached. They came. That's how it worked. And I, I know sometimes we kind of go, oh. so that's why I would say we're closing with a worship song. Response is not up to me. But allow for response. If you're sharing your faith, make sure you allow them time to talk, to ask their questions, to accept or deny. But however it ends, always end with a word of hope. You know what? God does love you. You might walk away today, but I want you to know no matter where you go or how you feel about him, he's going to love you. I actually witnessed this or I wouldn't bring it up. But it was preaching and there were some visitors here. And at the end of the service... I actually said, I said something like this about coming to Christ. And I said, if you don't accept him now, I'm not kidding. I'm not making this up. As Joe Biden would say, I'm not making this up. Anyway, cut that out of the tape, please. Anyway, uh, I said, if you don't receive him now, he will not stop pursuing you. And I watch a young man right back in here go, I mean, just, I thought this was over. I thought if I could get out of here, it didn't work. He won't. He loves you. We've all heard the story about the hound of heaven. He is the hound of heaven. He will pursue you. So when Peter was done on Pentecost, that was not the end of the story. It was the beginning. And we'll pursue that in the coming weeks. But my hope is that we get a concept of sharing our faith. We get a concept of the urgency of the hour that we live in now. We're close. Do we have five more years, ten? I don't know. I, and I'm not going to set the date. How's that? I'm not going to write a book and say it'll be 2030 on my birthday. No. No. There's a lot of those guys that have gone, come and gone, all right? So we don't want to do that. But we do want to tell you, we want to warn you, the day is coming. And it is close. Let's pray. Father, we want to be bold witnesses. We want to get it down to where we can share openly, confidently, that when we look at Peter who stood up before thousands, let us stand before one. Sometimes it's just one. Sometimes it's two or three. Father, my, my thought, and, and I, we're going to be doing it too. Over the next six weeks or eight weeks, we're going to be seeing family and friends that we don't see often. And I'm asking God today, right now, ahead of time, that we be bold in our witness and that we be prepared to give every man an answer for the hope that lies within us. We're ready. Our purpose will be fulfilled as we share. I believe that. If nothing else, Lord, I'm just giving throwing things. At least we'll pray for them. We'll let them know we love them. We're not preaching at them. We're preaching for them. We want them. I just, the thing with Peter, and he goes, and he pleaded 
I just almost see a man on his knees going, please, this is it. This is your salvation. This is your moment. This is your day. Come to Christ. Father, that, that message has got to start burning in us. We thank you for your love for us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Um, we have a closing song. Um, if you want prayer or a prayer of agreement, you can come on down. I'll be down here. If you want to go to the benches, fine. Or you can stand and pray. And But please worship your God. I always feel like, oh, this is just the last moment. Let's just get through this. No, 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 no. We're worshiping our God in every moment that we are together. Let's, do, let's stand and worship together. Sing Jesus in the whole names. Thank you for the reminder today. You are Emmanuel, God with us. We are never alone. And so I thank you for that promise. It, we always do that at Christmas. I know it, Lord. We go, oh, Emmanuel, man. It's Emmanuel 365 days a year. He's always with us. So we remind each other, God is with you, my brother and sister. God is in you he has sealed you by his holy spirit and he has given you everything you need for life and for godliness he's given you everything you need for eternal life he's given you everything you need for today we thank you lord for your great love for us in the name of jesus we praise you amen amen uh we're gonna have a short business meeting for those who want to hang around please do see if we behave all right that's what i always say <laughs>